Gianni Russo, Staten Island. Tell me, growing in right. Staten Island. I love it. Great place before the bridge, though. Not really? Now. I know. The bridge really populated it. Did it really? I think so. Well, you said you were... You were I worked at clubs there, Crescidos in Miami Club, as a comic many years ago, and I love that town. I used to travel back and forth. Staten Island. Oh, Robert Loesch is from Staten Island. Is he really? Yeah. Went How? to Newdorp High School. Study acting when you were there? No. Or, no. No, I should have, maybe. Because <laughs> you, 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 you came to New York, is that it, uh, in Manhattan? You, no, what happened was that uh, my first film was The Godfather. The Godfather, of course, yes. And uh, I just read publicity that they were going to use unknowns. Right. You know, Jewish doctors would be Jewish doctors, Sicilians uh -huh. would be Sicilians. Mm -hmm. Only to find out that it was a publicity stunt. They were uh -huh. going to definitely use big actors, right. as we all know they did. So I shot a screen test for myself uh -huh. and submitted it to Paramount. Uh -huh. And I played Michael, Carlo, and Sonny. Uh -huh and uh, was fortunate enough to get the, the role of Carlo. Never did a film? Never did acting? Never did anything. Really? But you had a club in Vegas at the time, didn't you? Or no, 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 that was no? afterwards. Really? That was afterwards, yeah. The club, I, I do things in seven-year cycles. So we're talking about The Godfather being right. 21 years 21 ago. 21 years ago. We made it. What were you doing before that, though? Well, I was in a you lot of business. You were on the cover. You were on the cover, I think. No, no, no. We're not going to get into that. Go ahead. No, I did a lot of business, basically, and uh, always wanted to be an actor. Always, as a, as a uh -huh. kid. And just was fortunate enough, and now uh, I'm back in it after being out of it 14 years. Right, so. right, right. But uh, that's how I started my career. I never studied. In Staten Island, I was just a... Just an Italian, Italian boy. Italian Down on South Beach. That's <laughs> it. Brando. Working with Brando. Unbelievable experience. First but film? Everywhere. Yeah, God. the first film. And when you think about it, because the first day's work was a rehearsal, I remember it well, on 119th Street, Patsy's Restaurant in New York City. Ah. And they said, we were just going to do a cold reading of the script. Right. And everybody read from the page. Me not being an actor, I thought they were going to turn the air conditioning on or something. I didn't uh -huh. know what a cold reading is. What uh -huh. I know. Uh -huh. And I walked into this room, and there were such legends like Sterling Hayden and Richard Conti and Marlon Brando and on and on and on. And then the newcomers, the Jimmy Cons uh -huh. and the Al Pacinos and Diane Keatons. Uh -huh. And to see, you know, the ensemble of those people. Mm -hmm. And I sat down, Brando was very funny because Brando came up to me and he said, uh, I just saw you in something, what was it? I said, I don't know. <laughs> he says, uh, it was a film, you just did a film. Uh -huh. I said, no. He said, you have a TV series? Uh -huh. I said, no. He said, I know you didn't do Broadway. I know everybody on Broadway. Uh -huh. I said, uh, no. He says, what are you doing here? I said, I'm playing the role of Carlo. He said, my son-in-law? I said, yeah. He said, Francis, come over. Because <laughs> I had no experience. Uh -huh. And, uh, Great. You know, he's a wonderful on, guy, Brent. Oh, if he likes you, he's fabulous. I consider him, would you consider him the best actor there is around to Oh, I would think. The best. Uh, I would think in the last three decades, actually. There isn't any better. And I just had the privilege of working with him again about a year ago. In Godfather too? No, in The Freshman. A Freshman? With uh, Matthew Broderick and Bruno Kirby. Very How was, funny What film. part did you do in that? I did a part that I knew they probably couldn't use, and I kept telling Andrew Bergman, I said, Andrew, uh -huh. how could you get a release from Paramount to uh -huh. use Carlo again? Uh -huh. And uh, the character was Carlo. Uh -huh. And I ran the club for him that he had. I see. Where the fancy dinner was at the end. Right. And I was up there for a long time, but unfortunately I only have about one or two minutes at the end of the film. Right, right. But just being on the set and working with Brando is an education in itself. Uh -huh. He could teach you more in an hour than most dramatic teachers. Was know. The Godfather 1 filmed in New York or here? It was in New Godfather York. Godfather 1, which is so ironic, was filmed... Most of my part was filmed on Staten Island. Was it really? In your hometown? Yeah, which was scary to go back Wait. that way. Right. Because, um, you know, it's, it's, as I say, I believe in numbers. I'm, I mean, I believe in uh -huh. God, but I'm uh -huh. uh, into numerology. And this was like a fourth cycle of sevens. And to go back, because uh -huh. my life changes so drastically every seven years. It does. Yeah, it's not a situation where maybe, you know, I'll just change uh -huh. location and have uh -huh. the same profession. My whole life changes. It's weight it's, loss, it's careers, it's uh -huh. everything. And to go back to Staten Island, you know, and do this film, 
because the wedding scene was on Staten Island when I married her. Right. My death scene was on Staten Island. The baptismal was on Staten Island. There were so many things. Really? Other than the fight scene with Jimmy and I in the streets, right. that was up in Harlem, uh -huh. you know, right on the right, streets right. in Harlem. But uh, most of my stuff was shot on Staten Island. I'd like to see a clip from uh, the Godfather one you brought. That's on Staten Island? Staten Island? Yeah. I'd love to see that clip right now. Okay, I'd great. love to see it. I think it's great. Okay, we'll see it. That's great. Staten Island. Staten must have been Island. a hero. Oh, when, I was a hero. After this film then. came back, oh, yeah. it must have been a hero there. Well, everybody, it was so funny because uh, even with Jimmy Conn and all of us, we got friendly, obviously, in rehearsals. Right. And going to Staten Island every day, we were all living in New York City uh -huh. at the time because they housed most of us in the city. And every time we'd get on the island and get on location. All your friends? All my friends were there when they were yelling to me and Jimmy <laughs> said, but who was this guy? <laughs> Nobody knows him, but this uh -huh. whole island knows uh -huh. him. But they didn't realize, you know, this is where I was born and raised. Uh -huh. so were you really married nice. then when you no, did this? No, you weren't married, no. you were single. Yeah, I've been single most of my life. You have? Fortunately. 10 children, come on, how can well, you be single? We can't publicize all No, this. but 10 children you have. Yeah. Gianni, I guess, I don't know, you know. 10. Any I other counting. Any other hobbies? I mean, no. God. Yeah, I have a lot of hobbies. You're married now? Married and very happily married. And very. I have a fabulous little little baby, uh -huh. Luciano Antonio. A new one. A new baby. That's the tenth. Ten, yeah, ten weeks old. Why do the Italians Italian. always have a lot of children? They love children, don't they? They love kids. I, I guess it, I don't know if they love children or they love romance. Ah. I mean, <laughs> okay. The children are an after product, uh -huh. obviously. But uh, you know, I, I really don't like speaking of 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 the way I'm not proud of the way I have my children. Really, oh, I see. I'm very proud of having this baby because I did it right. I got married, and you know, it's wonderful. And then you you had a club. Then what happened after Godfather One? What happened to Gianni Russo? You disappeared from somewhere. I did for uh, yeah. What I did, I came to Hollywood, and I was just not mature enough. I guess you know, right. coming out of a film that size and my head wasn't right and it just came here and I, I just you know with the Rolls Royce cars and all the you did it all Hollywood affected me like you wouldn't believe really really and it was uh, it was devastating after you know three or four years uh -huh. had big big management and big agents uh -huh. pursuing me because I had no agent when I signed the film right I just signed myself because I never acted before and I went with a, a good Italian, I felt. Let's take this agency, because there's an Italian called Jack Gelardi. Jack Gelardi, I see him. Yeah, he's one of the biggest. Who handles winners, right. all of the best. And uh, Jack was my agent. And I guess, as I said, you know, I wasn't ready for California at right. the time. I did a lot of films. I did a fabulous film right after The Godfather with Tony Curtis called Lepke, Lepke where I played yes. Albert Anastasia. Right. I've worked with the greatest actors, fortunately. And uh, I did The Four Deuces with Jack Palance. Uh -huh. And on and on and on. In fact, I just finished working with a director uh -huh. that I worked with 17 years ago, Peter Himes. Peter Himes, yes. And we did a film back then called Good Night, My Love. Right. With Victor Borno and Richard Boone and Michael Dunn and Barbara Ooh. Baines, a fabulous God, cast. what a cast. Yeah. And 17 years later, I'm working, as we speak, uh -huh. in fact, on a film called Stay Tuned. Uh -huh. That'll be out this summer in July, a feature... And I was kidding Peter. I said, I work for you every 17 years. I said, this is ridiculous. <laughs> but, uh, but I want to get into something before we go into the film. I want to talk about Gianni Russo studying acting. Did you, after Godfather, after you looked at yourself on the screen, did you just say, hey, I got to study? Or, or did you study at all? No, I, I still haven't studied. You what? still haven't? No. What, I, what I'd rather do, and maybe I'm wrong about that, I... I feel that there are so many actors out there right and basically it's what i can contribute to the role gianni russo right. my inner soul so what i try to do basically i got to know myself better and ah. now i know who i am okay. and i feel that i'm very flexible i can become like an enigma uh -huh. or i can become a chameleon i can i'm i i have different facets to my own personality uh -huh. now so it gives me the opportunity right, to right. take on, I just played a German, uh -huh. Klaus Gerhardt. I, uh -huh. I'm doing different things now and trying to get out of that gangster pigeonhole. Right. Is that because Gianni, Gianni Russo is a loner? Yeah, I'm Because you are a definitely a oh, consider yeah. a loner here in Hollywood. Oh, yeah. Why I, is it? I don't know. I always was a loner, though. I've collected very few friends in my life. 
And my best friend right now is my wife, and uh, it's a situation where I never had to have these false egos and the entourages right. and all of that. Uh -huh. And I think now, approaching my maturity, I'm also maturing as an actor. Uh -huh. And I'm taking on different situations. I just uh -huh. did a two-hour Perry Mason where I play a clothing designer, uh -huh. a la Halston or whatever, with right. the horn-rimmed glasses. And, and I think, you know, in years to come, I will become a great actor. Uh -huh. And then I have the privilege of working in front of a camera uh -huh. and not the theater groups and not, you know, the right. workshops. So Gianni Russo really knows himself within himself. He found himself. He knows himself. I don't know if that's marketable, though, yet. Yeah. I, I, I think I am. But again, now it's to get it to the marketplace one other time. Right. You know, and I think acting is such a privilege when you think of the profession and how many right. people who want to be actors. Right. And there's only a select few. And I've been fortunate enough to support myself with it, where you're a lot of actors aren't. You're kind of spiritual, aren't you? Yeah, very. I very. Am. Yeah. I, I believe, you know, that... And... and uh, I'm not one that has negativities, you know, I'm not... If some, positive thinking. I'm constantly positive thinking, and I like when my friends take a role, even if it's my role. You know, I'm not, I've, I just met an actor on the way over here, and I told him about a part that I'm up for this morning. So you I share. Said, Go get it, you know, try right. it. Mm -hmm. You could do it. Uh -huh. And it's Joe Cortese, in fact. Right. And, uh, you know, I think that's what it should be. And this, this business... Right is so, so strange, the yeah. people out here. That's the only way I could define them. You just, did this, you just did this film right now. You're working in this film. Just tell me about this film. You, uh, we have the clip you brought. No, that one's this completed. Completed? That one's with, uh, uh, I have always been a fan of this man since What's, our man Flint, James uh, yes, Colbert. Yes, James Colbert. It's called The Silver Fox. Silver Fox. And Tom Selleck produced it. Did he really? Really, which was interesting. And a director that I love, he's fabulous, Rod Holcomb. Oh, yeah. I've worked for Rod so many times with mm -hmm. Stephen Cannell's Wise Guys when uh -huh. we did the pilot yeah. and uh, Riptide and Greatest American Heroes. Uh -huh. And he took a chance with me because, you know, a lot of actors out here, once you're categorized, which I am, I'm basically right, categorized right, right. a gangster. Does that upset you? It because you are an Italian. Me. I'm Italian too, you know. And that's kind of, it doesn't really upset me, but it does get, bother me just a little that they always. Siciliano's got to be gangsters. Well, you know, I think Why? it's our own fault, too, though. Why? Because I think the majority of the Italian population like to create this mystique, whether they are or aren't. Uh -huh. And I think we're guilty of that. You know, instead oh. of looking at the Marconis or the Columbuses or the people of, right, the, right. you know, of, of great prestige and uh -huh. great notoriety, you know, we'd rather associate ourselves to the the dark side. Right, right, right. And uh, so I, I can't say that, you know, I'm not guilty of that either. Uh -huh. So, you know, I, and to cast me as a gangster, uh -huh. it's very easy. And you, I've played so many. I mean, I've done 23 <laughs> films as a gangster. Yeah. i like to see this next one you're doing right now. Yeah, this next this, is a this shock. one is a shocker. a shocker. you got great legs. That's all I can tell you. <laughs> see, I always wanted to throw somebody through the window. I've gone through more windows. Yeah. The last one you did, yeah. yeah. You went through it. Now you threw someone. And Barbara Baines threw me out a window, too. Did she really? Night, my love. Yeah. I've gone through, like, I think six windows. So when I read the script... And Do you actually go through them? Or do you have a stand? Well, yeah, it's all sugar glass. All sugar. Yeah, of yeah, course, I know. I understand. To the Godfather was the hardest one to do. Because Why is that? Francis is such a perfectionist, and the camera was mounted on the hood of the car. Right. So he tried regular car windshields. Oh, I Because he didn't want the sugar glass. You'd see it just break away, and everybody yeah. knows the old windshields had that heavy plastic yeah. in yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. So they weighted down my shoes. I had steel uh -huh. shoes uh -huh. on, oh. steel sole shoes. So it was to kick that window out. Tell me about your club in Vegas. Come on, Gianni. That State club, Street was... It was popular. Yeah, Las I love Vegas. It. Yeah. What happened? I did it seven years. I opened the club in 1981. It was a fabulous club. And I always wanted to own a club. And but I, you shared this club with a lovely singer. Oh, no, no. That, wasn't she? Wasn't that, that's a myth. Uh, most was people thought that Dionne Warwick... Dionne Warwick... She, owned yep. the club, or was my partner. Partner. She's was my best friend. I still consider Come on, her my she friend. she was your lover, wasn't she? George no, Ugaras, guys. You know, I'll tell you something. Dion Warwick Dionne and Dion Warwick and I yeah. met on a, a game show okay. called Celebrity Sweepstakes, Bert right. Sugman's show, right after The Godfather, or soon after. It was about 15, 16 years. 
And I, and this is a true story. I don't know if you can put this on the air. Go ahead. I leaned over to her and I said, you know, I made more love. I made love to more women, to your music. I just have to thank you. Because between her and Johnny Mathis, uh -huh. you get a girl in an apartment in New York City. <laughs> That's with true. that music was great mood music. That's true. That's right. And she thought that was very funny. We be, we cultivated a friendship, and we've done some business ventures. Uh -huh. And that friendship, I I mean I have to I mean I have to be honest with you. I did kindle the fire. Right. And it, she was married at the time. Uh huh. And then Bill passed on, and I got very close to the boys. Right. Her two sons, which I love yet, they're great kids, and these are some of the things. Unfortunately, you know, when, when you have a friendship uh -huh. that rolls into a romance, right, right, right. It, it, these voids of not being able to see the kids uh -huh. again and all of that, because you know, you spend 15 years with people. That's a long time, 15. and uh, I know she's bitter, and she she should be. Why she should she be bitter? Tell me. I, I because I think I didn't handle it right. You know, I'm man enough to say I didn't handle the the ending of it right I see and uh, but you know Dion was very supportive uh -huh. to the club and because of her Sinatra and Sammy Davis did my commercials they all came in your club always all always. the stars Sinatra everybody he got up and they sang. did my commercials for me. did they really Dean Martin Sinatra Sammy <laughs> Davis in fact every every professional fight uh -huh. in Vegas right Eddie Murphy used to come in with a party afterwards and then perform, get on That's stage. Great. In fact, Don Rickles, who's been a friend who's of mine forever, is the first time he heard me sing was in my own club because I used to get on stage there. You and Rickles worked together. He got you on yeah, stage? He took me on, on the road with him for a year. You know, I worked with funny. Don in Washington, D.C. at a club called The Wayne Room. I, he was called the Glasshead Rickles at the time, and I was the MC. And he was the star of the show, and I brought him on. And that's the last time I, I, I could not believe I worked with this great guy after. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, when he came back from Europe, here it is. Don Rickles in Vegas was a big well, He's unique. Hit. I mean, his act is so unique. He's the only one that could do it. I mean, Insulting, and, doing, but, he's, but you can take it from him. Yeah, I, I guess so. What's you the know, secret? I, I've watched audiences on the East Coast and the West Coast by traveling with them. I uh -huh. had the privilege of you know, working You were with his them. opening act singing? I was his opening act at the Golden Nugget and then also at Resorts International right. in Atlantic City. And uh, I used to watch the audiences because, you know, again, I, I'm a student uh -huh. and I like watching reaction right, and what right. gets reaction. Of course. And uh, I don't know how he gets away with what he does. <laughs> but because you sang great. Oh, thank you. You sang great. I I'd love to see a clip right now. You, you did this where, this clip we're showing? The I clip think you're Vegas showing now, no, this, this clip was uh, a privilege, again, that Donald Trump gave me. Donald Trump. And the Trump Organization made me a headliner. At, the, at New Jersey. After a year of traveling with Rickles, I... What kind of guy is Donald Trump? I don't know him. I mean, I couldn't say is that it? I know him. I just know his but organization, he, but he, and he believed in me, and he and did they, a wonderful party for me. Uh-huh. And, and this is it? Uh, You're yeah. Latin and romantic and sophisticated. But you have to correct that. A lot of people say that. Julio. Yeah. Remind you of me. I'm older. You're, ah. Oh, <laughs> no, you're not older than me. Oh, yes, Are I you am. really? Oh, yeah. God, you look I'm so I'm older than Julio. Really? Sure. So, I, I like Gian people go up to Julio and say, you know who you remind me of? Jenny Russo. <laughs> I'd like to see his face someday. Uh huh. Tell me about uh, films, writing, directing. Would you like to do that? I like to write. I've written several things, but mm -hmm. nothing's been produced. I like to write. Producing and directing, to me, I think, you know, it's, it's, my grandfather used to say, you know, do what you know. That's right. I don't even know acting yet. I'm still, you know, pursuing that. Leave it to the producers and leave it to the directors. And You I go like there the and you just do it. Yeah, I like to be the character and take on the character. And you listen to the fun. actor and you react and that's what you do, right? I'm a reactor, basically. Reactor. Brando that's taught me that. It. That's it. Brando says, don't act, react. Just react. That's, that's acting. And I've always tried that. You know, a lot of times I'll go through lines and I'll talk with the director and I'll say, can I lose this line and uh -huh. do that? And I uh -huh. says, it's so, it's so much verbiage. Yeah. Let me, if I can convince you that I can do it without the dialogue, right. would you right. let me? Because it's yeah. looks. You know, you yeah. can take a look. You can do yeah. things. And I think the expression, and that's more what right. I do, right. I think. Gianni Russo. Would you say you had a good time looking back over your life? Look, I've had you, the greatest life of huh? all, I think. You've had a good time? I've had all the privileges. And I'm doing what I want to do. And you I'm, have ten children. 
Oh. That's wonderful. Scapey, I don't know if I, I have 20. What does that but that's, mean? But, but you know, Deji, No, that's but it's terrible. wonderful. I think it's a wonderful uh, uh, look at you. God, you look, you've had a good time. Oh, yeah. Would you do it the same way? Yeah, I think I would. You would change it? I would change it a little. I think I just spent too much money too fast. Never thought it would end. You know, I've been broke three times in my life. It's a situ I say that for the IRS. But you do marketing. <laughs> but you do marketing right now. You have oh, business. I take businesses. Yeah, business. I love business. I love cultivating products. I love taking new business public, and that's fun for me. Uh huh. Acting to me is like someone going to play golf. Right. And it's the greatest pastime of all for me. Uh huh. And at my age, I could say, you know, someone calls me up and says, "Let's go on location for three mm -hmm. weeks, a month, uh -huh. six weeks." I can do that. Uh huh. My associate right now, I have a guy in Connecticut that just runs everything. I could leave tomorrow morning. He's my partner in everything. Here in California you live or in New I York? live in California and... High coast? Well, basically I'm in three, three positions. Really? Yeah. I'm in New York City, Las Vegas, and California. Did you, did you have a good time in Las Vegas when you were there and having your club? I liked Vegas in the old days. I mean, Vegas is Vegas, and I, I, I can't uh -huh. knock it. It's been very Because you were with the best people, Sinatra, oh, Sammy yeah, I mean, Davis. When the Sands was uh, great, and the Riviera Hotel, and yeah. people used to dress with suits right. and ties. And well, that's you. You're elegant. Well, thank you're you. You're elegant. You're sophisticated. You know, that is you. You like to dress. You're not just an Italian guy with a leather jacket on. Hey, no, hey, I hey. think there's too much you know, there's leather on the streets in Beverly Hills right now. <laughs> there is, isn't there? A lot of leather. Yeah. No. Tell me about Sinatra. What kind of guy is Sinatra? Do I, don't, I don't know him at all. Oh, I, come I've on. Been you in do. His comp no, no. Yes, I you, you do. You do you've been in this company you don't know him? No. He took my baby the other night in Mateo's restaurant, my right. little boy. He was 10 days old. Two weeks ago he was there. Is that the time? Yeah. No, this Three? was this okay. was probably. He's always there on Sunday yeah, nights. Yeah, right. And Maddie and I have been friends for a long time. And, you know, I've crossed paths with Frank, and Frank has made pasta. And uh -huh. we've, you know, I, the greatest time I've had was in my restaurant with him. We sat down one night uh -huh. for hours mm -hmm. just talking because Frank Sinatra and I share the same date of birth the same minute the same hour really 12 miles apart Jersey to Hoboken to Staten Island that's right and as I said I'm, I'm into numbers sevens and twelves motivate my life we're both born 12 12 mm -hmm. and when he started to talk to me and he didn't realize because I became a fan of his when I was seven years old. Uh huh. So seven years of age, he was my alter ego. Uh -huh. I was hospitalized with polio at the time, and that was his big heyday in uh -huh. the 50s yes. in New York Paramount. Paramount. And I read in the newspaper that he was born December 12th, and that more or less made me like I uh -huh. had to be with him. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And one of the greatest pleasures I have is that the other night he took my little baby. Uh -huh and t was holding him, uh -huh. and you know, I wish he held me, <laughs> but he was holding my As baby. rough an Italian guy as you are, you kiss each other and yeah. you hug each oh, other. Yeah. That's and he's been very polite, uh -huh. and he's, you know, I can't say he's a friend, and I, I really don't know him. I think Frank Sinatra is so complex, I don't think his kids know him. Uh -huh. He's so, I mean, he's a very, very complex man. What makes Jilly and Sinatra so close? I've s Jilly and you'll have to ask Jilly. Ah, <laughs> uh, really? Because that's something about Jilly and Sinatra, so tightly close. Well, I think they're neighborhood guys. Is that what it is? You know, yeah, I think, they grew you know, up together as buddies. You have you someone. You have somebody like that back in Staten Island, don't you? Yeah. No, I lost him though. He was a close friend of mine. Uh huh. Yeah. But 